Good morning. Welcome back to the Broadcast Retirement Network. I'm Jeff Snyder. This is BRN Sunday for Sunday, March 19th, 2023. We've got another great show for you this week with members of the media, academia, financial services, and government standing by as we analyze all the news and events for the week. So sit back, relax, enjoy this episode of BRN Sunday. But if you're tired of the same old story, oh, come we're going to kick off the show with a look at what's happening on Capitol Hill in terms of legislation, litigation, regulation, and a lot more. And arbitration. I'm going to say arbitration as well. Joining us on the line, you know them as the Legal Eagles, but they're also known as David Levine and Kevin Walsh. Both are principals with Groom Law Group. Gentlemen, great to talk to you. As always, thanks so much for joining us this morning. Jeff, thanks for having us on. Listeners, we hope you had a happy St. Patrick's Day and that you're enjoying seasons pivoting towards spring. Absolutely. David, it's a... Uh, some uh, St. Patty's Day is is obviously a good time to sit back and relax with friends. But this has been a really interesting week. Uh, you know, we've been reading a lot in the news, and I know you want to talk a little bit about what, just in general, what happens with retirement plans when it comes to things like bankruptcy and market challenges. Uh, absolutely, Jeff, and and I, and I do like your discussion of arbitration in your introduction. Is, is it because you're arbitrating the agreement between the Eagles and, and the Broadcast Retirement Network right now? Is that why? Uh, I don't I think hope, so. But I, I hope that. I I, and I should say, I should just be very completely transparent that you know we we're in a position where we do not pay our contributors, uh, nor do they pay us. So uh, no, we are not arbitrating. We're very pleased when both of you or one of you can join us. We know that it's a it's a great time commitment. So thanks, David. And we appreciate you having us and we appreciate the time of listeners. No, to, to get to the serious though, obviously in the last couple of weeks, we've seen a lot of news that has at times been uh, disconcerting where you see banks being taken over, People are worried about the economy, job losses, all those other things. And the question that, that we're getting a lot of is, is my 401k safe? So this week, we thought we'd talk a little bit about how this works. If you have a 401k plan from your employer, a 401k plan that is subject to a bunch of rules. We always talk in, in wonk speak. We talk about things like ERISA and all those other things. But ERISA requires... ERISA and the Internal Revenue Code portions of it require that assets be held for the exclusive benefit of participants and beneficiaries. What does that mean? It means that underneath it all, your employer or, or and anybody else can't just grab the money sitting in your 401k. And you know, that's a good thing. And also, it requires that assets be held in trust. We could talk for our three Bs or uh, or 457 plan some other time. But the real key here is the assets have to be held in trust. What does that mean? It's a separate bank account, separate tax ID. It, it is not actually available to the creditors of your company. So if your employer were to unfortunately go through bad times and go into bankruptcy, your plan is protected. The money that's there stays yours and can't be grabbed by the creditors of your company. Another question that is coming up a lot right now is also, well, what about the money inside the plan if the vendor holding it, like the custodian or trustee, goes belly up? First of all, that's incredibly rare. And people are saying, well, I've read about the banks. There's things that if you actually are in banking products that have insurance, like generally, and I'm going to use the word generally like a bad lawyer here, FDIC in coverage for like a bank account at a bank applies. So you could have $250,000 of coverage unless the FDIC, like they did in some of the recent cases, decides to cover more in coverage for just cash that's in a bank deposit account in your 401k. Securities are covered by different insurance and they're held in different ways. But the key takeaway here is that Congress learning from the experiences like Studebaker, the automaker in the famous in the mid 20th century, where what happened was a Studebaker 
basically was a big famous name, but went belly up and all their pensions had no money. That's part of what led to ERISA being enacted in 1974. And now we've got those protections. So is there always a risk of fraud or other things out there? Sure. But in the real world here, especially for most employer plans and all the controls that are out there at this point, your money is protected. It's held separately. So you should be able to sleep pretty well at night. I know I do. Kevin, anything to add? Well, David, I was just glad that you concluded by letting us know that you sleep well at night. I think <laughs> listeners were very concerned um, you know, about the quality of your rest. <laughs> Uh, so I, thank, I'm, I'm glad thank, we. Thank, thank, thank you, Kevin. I just want to be clear. Uh, I sleep well at night on this note, but but I, every week as I think about the Eagles on the Thursday night, it causes many restless hours. I mean, I I, I tend to sleep <laughs> with one eye open, but so I'm glad to know that at least some of us are getting some rest. Um, but I, I think you did a great job at highlighting, you know, kind of the risk to you know the assets that you have in the system from kind of a custody standpoint. But I think it's also worth thinking about this week is, you know, when you look at your investment options, you know, in an invest, in a retirement plan, you know, is there anything being done? Is someone looking over them? And, you know, this is where, you know, ERISA has a duty to prudently select investment options that you make available in a plan. Um, it also has an obligation on plan fiduciaries to monitor those investments. So, you know, these duties, they don't, they don't mandate that your investments go up. When there's market turmoil, they can go down. When, you know, in just in general, they can go up or down. Um, but, what ERISA requires is that, you know, fiduciaries, when they're, you know, making investment options available to participants on a plan menu, um, that, that, you know, they're, they're vigilant in terms of when things do happen, when, you know, crazy things happen in the world, um, be it, you know, banking bankruptcies or, you know, other, you know, crazy things that can happen in the world. Um, you know, prudent plan fiduciaries are really, you know, supposed to take a look at the investment lineup, you know, check in with their experts, check in with consultants and others, and, and you know, try to seek to ensure that the investment options that are made available for participants remain prudent. So, you know, if I was as a participant in a plan, you know, when, when chaos strikes, um, sure, I'm worried, but one thing that provides some comfort is the idea that there are, there are you know, experts out there, there's prudent folks out there who have responsibility to be looking out for the choices that I have available. Yeah, um, this, I was going to just make a comment. This is a question that, uh, you know, when I was uh, formerly a record keeper or a consultant, uh, this is a question you get all the time, especially in 2008, you get the, the recent events. People always have a question about that. Uh, one question for you, gentlemen, we talked a lot about 401k. Would the same apply for 403b and also 457b, governmental plans? Sure. Let's start with 457B. 457B governmental plans have to be held in trust, so it should be a similar approach. Governmental structures are different. You have to look at a little bit, but the idea is, yes, it's held in trust generally. 403B plans, the custodial accounts, they still are not assets of the employer They or annuity contracts. But So you're looking to your insurer or your, or your custodian there. But in short, similar protections. There's just, there are some differences that would get really wonky, but you have similar protections there. And and uh, I guess last question, do, David, do you recommend that we get eight hours of sleep or do you, or should we go for 10 hours of sleep? Well, y Jeff, I, I think that's an individualized thing that I keep <laughs> in mind. I, I personally believe that I, that the average person gets about two hours of sleep a night. So anything more than that is great. Yeah, well, they're, you know, they're waiting with bated breath for the Legal Eagles to appear on the uh, Beer on Sunday podcast. Gentlemen, we're going to leave it there. Really appreciate your uh you're breaking that down. This is very much an important topic. It's one that's regularly asked by so many people. I know I get asked on the street uh, many times about assets. Thanks so much for joining us, and we look forward to having you back on the program again very soon, gents. Thank you. Thanks, thanks so much, Jeff, and thanks, listeners. Bye, gentlemen. Have a good weekend. Bye -bye. Have a great weekend. Thank you. Imagine a new television network that will make you richer, healthier, and in control of your financial future. This network is for the policewoman in Nashville, Tennessee, the baker in Dubuque, Iowa, 
the teacher in Lexington, Kentucky. We want to make the idea of savings and retirement culturally relevant. But what do you see as a defining issue of the midterms? Especially for the smaller businesses, I mean, they are the lifeblood of the American economy. Featuring exclusive interviews, current affairs, and docu-series. 33 yeah. years old, you retired early. The philosophy is money only matters if it helps you live a life that you love. But you gotta start thinking about retirement as soon as you get in. The Broadcast Retirement Network will drive very high engagement with premium partnerships. So this isn't retirement and savings for your parents or grandparents. This is for all Americans. And we're gonna change the way you think about money. Welcome to the next frontier of retirement and savings. This is BRN, the Broadcast Retirement Network. Are you stuck with a low credit score? A credit report and score that's causing you to be denied credit or pay higher interest rates than others for the same things? Then do what Terrence did and call Credit Repaired for your free credit evaluation to help restore your credit. I started thinking about buying a new house and my score wasn't where I needed it to be. I called and spoke with one of the representatives and we just had a good conversation and I, I liked what he was saying. Just one call for his free credit evaluation was all it took to start back on the track to repairing his credit. I'm seeing the deletions and I'm getting the report so I know something's being done. It does make a difference to me. All it takes is one call to get started. Credit repair has given me a second chance to have a better credit score. Don't let a low credit score hold you back another day. Do what Terrence did and make the call for your free credit evaluation. Call 800-819-4152. That's 800-819-4152. Again, 800-819-4152. Welcome back. We're joined this morning by Jane King, financial journalist and the host of The Innovators with the aforementioned Jane King. Jane, thanks so much for staying with us this morning. Sure. Glad to be here. All right. So in behind you, and people I think know this, you're coming to us live or not live, recorded from the NASDAQ. And the NASDAQ tends to focus on some of these technology stocks, biotech stocks. What's the been reaction specifically to those? Because they would have been at one point funded perhaps by a Silicon Valley bank or one or a signature bank or, or another bank like this. That's right. Well, and they're kind of dealing with their own issues as well. So uh, Meta is just announcing this morning, they're cutting 10,000 jobs mm -hmm. and they are going to not fill 5,000 open positions. So you're seeing a lot of these tech companies pull back on their spending. I mean, these are the wealthiest companies the planet has ever seen, um, trillions in, in value, and they're still cutting back. So we've heard from Google, we've heard from Meta, Twitter, of course, has cut their kind of their own situation. Um, so I feel like these tech companies have just, they grew so much during the pandemic, added jobs. Amazon is cutting jobs as well. Um, so they, they've added jobs, they added warehouses, they added all these new things. They're just paring back and just being run more efficiently and more conservatively. So um, that's kind of a different situation. Even Apple is uh, they're looking to kind of not be so dependent on China and the supply chain there. So they're moving some of their production to India and Vietnam. So there's just a lot of change, I feel like, going on with these tech companies right now. And is there concern uh, you know, for pre-IPO companies? Again, you're at the NASDAQ, so you're focusing on uh, existing listed companies, but is there concern like, where am I going to get capital um, to build my business? I mean, yeah. a lot of companies, not mine and, and, and not yours, but are funded through venture or private equity money, money that is invested. Where do you go if you can't go to a, a standard, uh, excuse, not a standard charter, uh, uh, Silicon Valley or right. a signature bank? I don't know. I have standard charter bank. No <laughs> offense, guys. Don't, don't write me. I had them on the brain. Yeah. Where do you go? Well well, IPOs have dried up. We haven't seen a lot this year. We didn't see a lot last year. So they recognize that this is not a good time to come to the market. And I was talking to um, a venture capitalist last week who said, you know, the game's changing. And it was always hard to get venture capital money. You hear these stories about Facebook and all this. It's very, very hard to get any money, let alone, you know, a nice amount to grow a business from a venture capitalist. And they say that things are changing. Just the macro is every 
everybody's getting more conservative. The inflation thing has weighed on them. Um, the stock market and kind of the uncertainty with this geopolitical tensions, all of that has caused everybody just to operate more conservatively right now. And I, I think we just have to kind of get ri- get used to this new normal, at least probably for the rest of 2023. Jane, you mentioned the social media, how it created a brush fire in segment one, we were talking about the brush fire around Silicon Valley Bank. I mean, is that still, does that concern you? I know it, I'll, I'll just I'll just be flat out and say, the, the amount of information that is flowing on social media, and I hear about people like doing, pulling their braces off using TikToks. And so it's not just financial, but it's all sorts of information. Does that concern you? There's a lot, of, in my opinion, a lot of disinformation, misinformation oh, yeah. that you just get the wrong message without any basis. You can't get that in 240 characters or 30 seconds. No. And I even heard that some of the people on social media that were talking about um, Silicon Valley Bank and how it was going to fail were short the stock. So not only were they spreading disinformation, they were making money off of it as well. So, um, you know, I I like social media. I like to, you know, I use different ones for different things. Um, But you just have to have a skeptical eye. It's just so hard to tell what's true. When do you really have some good early information? And when is this you know, not to be believed. And I'm, I'm not sure what the solution is for that. <laughs> no, I think it's just being a, a better, it's being a better consumer of information. And, and probably, I mean, I know when I do my newsletter every morning, I, I read multiple sources. So I'm getting it from AP. I might be getting it from all these different sources that kind of piece together the story. And candidly, there are, you know, people are going to have different perspectives. I think that's right. important. Last question, Jane. Uh, we, I think when we last talked, we talked about FTX. And to think about that, you know, that right now we don't know all the details, but very different. But what does this just say about our financial system with FTX? There was some fraud involved. Yeah. Um, there's definitely some concerns here. And I know, uh, speaking of uh, influencers, I know Shaq, they were trying to serve Shaq some papers around FTX mm-hmm. and he was off the grid somewhere. So they couldn't even find him. Shaquille <laughs> O'Neal. Shaquille O'Neal. Yeah. So, um, well, I, I think both of these situations really come down to um, regulators and um, and both were ma- managed poorly, right? I mean, I, so I think, you know, it's just my, I kind of have like this little bit of a radar that goes up when you've got a company like an FTX and they're all of a sudden hanging out with celebrities and stuff. And that always is kind of a red flag for me. <laughs> so, I mean, I didn't sort of foresee the collapse, but I was always kind of like, eh, I think this is a half BS company or whatever. <laughs> I don't know. It seemed like it was too, trying too hard with the Tom Brady and all this stuff. Um, but um, I think, you know, regulators have got to do a better job of keeping an eye on this. Now, crypto really doesn't have hardly any regulation. They've talked about it. They put it off. They've kind of, I feel like they need to do something there. Um, they need to have some you know, regulation for these companies. Um, but Silicon Valley did have regulators and I don't know, they were asleep or something. I'm not sure what happened there, but I think there's probably going to be a lot of hearings ab- about uh, the Silicon Valley. Yeah. I mean, as if we didn't have enough hearings around social media, now we're going to have hearings about, you know, uh, of, of what the regulators knew, what, what they didn't know, yeah. what the FDIC knew. I mean, it's going to be, it's going to be a circus as, as it usually is. Well, Jane, we're going to have to leave it there. This story, clearly not over, but you know what? We can always count on Jane King to break it down for us. Jane, always great to see you. Thanks Thanks so much for joining us, and we look forward to having you back on the program again very soon. And that wraps up this episode of BRN Sunday. Have a topic of interest, someone you think we should talk to? Drop us a line, and don't forget, for all the latest curated news and lifestyle, wellness, finance, tech, so much more, all in one place, check out today's edition of our daily newsletter, The Morning Pulse. Want to search our archives, check out our latest content? Well, visit our website and, of course, all of our streaming partners. We're back again tomorrow for another edition of BRNAM. Until then, I'm Jeff Snyder. Stay safe, keep on saving, and don't forget, roll with the changes.